Welcome back, everyone. I hope you're feeling artistic today. In episode one, I showed you some of the incredible cave art that we've discovered all over the world. This art represents many different time periods, many different artists, including some of our early ancestors, as well as other human-like species that existed before our time or coexisted with us. Think back for a second about this image that I showed you in the last video. Here's some of the earliest art researchers have identified for three different human species. Earliest for Homo naledi, earliest for Homo sapiens, and some of the earliest for Neanderthals. Some of these creations, these engravings, have been separated in time by as much as 200,000 years by dramatically different groups of people, and yet they're almost identical. The similarity of all this art being created in caves all over the world by beings who, in many cases, had never had contact with any other human species who were also making art, well, that by itself is remarkable and mysterious. But there's so much more. In this episode, we're going to explore the spectacular beauty and profound meaning of this artwork. Why were they making this art? What was its purpose? Did it have meaning? For much of it, We'll never know for sure, but in some cases, we can now see that, yeah, it had meaning, and some really clever researchers have been able to decipher it. We'll see that the most common subjects in cave paintings are large animals, such as horses, bison, aurochs, deer, as well as tracing of human hands. Some of these animals were certainly prey, a food source for the Paleo peoples. But that's probably not the principal reason they've been drawn, because what was the main prey animal for much of the time period, caribou, is dramatically underrepresented in cave art. Along that line, we'll see more of what's typically not found in the artwork. It's really intriguing and revealing. All of these astounding works of art help define the early edge of human abstract thinking. And we're getting all sorts of clues and insights on the mindset of these ancient people. Let's jump to my favorite example. It used to be thought that art developed and got better, more sophisticated through time. In Chauvet Cave in Southeast France, that changed all that. It may be the most important of all the European cave art sites. Just imagine the thrill. It was 1994, not that long ago, when Elliot Brunel chipped through a stalactite, squeezed through a narrow opening, shined her light, and excitedly exclaimed to her two friends outside, they've been here. Inside the cave were hundreds of pictures of extraordinary beauty and sophistication. It's hard to make the case that any other cave art in Europe matches it or has as many amazing attributes. It's the oldest figurative art in Europe, dating to as long as 37,000 years ago. The art is the best or among the best preserved due to the collapse of the cave entrance about 26,000 years ago. The exquisite beauty of the art overturned theories that art evolved and improved over time. Rather, it's clear that artistic development had highs and low points throughout prehistory. I mean, take a look at that horse. Wow, that was drawn in poor light on a rough cave wall with charcoal taken out of a fire pit. Man, these artists were talented. Not only did the Chauvet artists draw elegantly, they imparted the suggestion of movement by incising or etching around the outlines of animals. And as in the case of a rhino, 
showing at least seven images of the horn. Imagine seeing this in a flickering torchlight. Well, back in 2022, Ellefson proposed that the lion panel represents the oldest landscape ever painted. Callaway in 2016 showed evidence of what is likely the oldest representation of a volcano, which were active in the Bas Viveras range, just 22 miles northwest of the cave between 35,000 and 29,000 years ago. The eruptions were Strombolian in nature with mild but colorful blasts of firework-like sprays that eject cinders as high as a thousand feet. So we know people were there at the time. We know these eruptions would have been easily visible from the hills around Chauvet. And we have these images, several red and white spray-shaped designs that have been partially covered over by later works. If the artwork does represent eruptions, these would be the oldest depictions of a volcano yet found by far, beating the next oldest by nearly 30,000 years. Even today, when we understand volcanoes, they amaze and dazzle us. Imagine the impression they made on our ancestors. How would they have explained them? Additionally, Chauvet has nearly 200 fossil cave bear skulls, and it's famous for 150 feet of fossilized footprints of a youth and his or her wolf dog who walked together and paused together 26,000 years ago, the oldest solid evidence of canine domestication that's been found. Man, there's just so much to love about this cave. Okay, but why was the art made? And is there meaning in some of the symbols used? In her outstanding recent book, Von Petzinger demonstrates there are 32 symbols that are used repeatedly in caves all over the world. The similarities of the symbols from Europe to Australia to the Americas are striking. The symbols may be directions to hunting sites, names of people or beasts, or perhaps religious symbols. It's unlikely that we're ever going to know for certain. But we have made some progress in that regard. Bacon and his team made a good case that groups of lines or dots on many of the animal paintings indicate the number of lunar months from the start of spring until the animals mate, or if a Y is involved, when they gave birth. That was important information for hunters of the time. Lots of the images had these lines or dots, generally three or four, varying from Northern to Southern Europe, depending on when the ice flows broke up on the rivers. Jean Klotz, who took a leading role in the study of Chauvet and Cosquer Caves, and who's written more than 300 papers and 20 books, well, he contends that much of the paleo cave art was produced by shamans. He and others have found evidence that in some cases, low oxygen levels, or even hallucinogenic plants, may have been used in attempts to interact with the spirit world. Many other anthropologists have been critical of his work, but recent research by Kedar in 2021 suggests that cave artists did favor remote, out-of-the-way passages for much of their art. The authors say they chose these sites in search of an oxygen-starved high, which doctors say gives people surges of dopamine. And in Western North America, it's very clear that hallucinogens and shamans did play a significant role. Let's take a look at the Lower Pecos River along the Texas-Mexico border where hundreds of caves there feature images like this famous one called the White Shaman Mural. There are colorful animals 
symbols, and human-like figures that date to 4,000 years ago. The pictures have been called second to none by renowned rock art archaeologist Jean Klotz. Remember, we just talked about him. The images almost certainly involve the ritual use of peyote since they are richly mystic and, even more convincing, similar age ground-up peyote buttons have been found in some of the caves. But they aren't simply the aimless product of drug parties. Dr. Carolyn Boyd has studied the images for decades, and she's convinced that many were made at the same time, and they represent a unified composition, or book, in her words. The discovery of underdrawings that laid out images before the paint was applied supports her contention. The pictures include directions for peyote ceremonies, ecological instructions, such as the effect of rain on animals and plant behavior, all the while weaving in myth and spirits into the story. On a personal note, I'm drawn to cave art, just fascinated by it, partly because in a very real sense, it's changed me. In my next video, I'll be talking about my visit to Lascaux II in France. I came out of that cave just stunned. That visit and all my research since, and just spending time with all these beautiful images from an almost unimaginably long time ago, it's impacted me. There's an old Chinese saying, when the pupil is ready, the teacher will come. And I get that better now. Delving into cave art has given me a better understanding and appreciation of why we, as human beings, feel the desire and need to create art. How it allows us to express ourselves, to establish our identities, to deal with our fears, to tell our life stories and dream our dreams. The more you learn about cave art, I think the more you feel that way. It's a weird and wondrous, almost mystical connection between us and our ancient relatives who wanted so much to be understood and remembered. Anyway, that's the way I feel. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode and our next one, our third and final video on Paleo Cave Art Mysteries, we'll explore some pretty compelling evidence that some cave images relate to stars and constellations, some amazing stuff from Lascaux and elsewhere. We'll talk a little about what's not found in cave art and why that might be. And we'll show some prehistoric rock art from Australia where, wow, more than 100,000 significant sites have been identified. I hope you'll hit the like button for this video and tune in to episode three, Paleo Cave Art Mysteries. See you there.